Welcome to this meditation on sin. Adam and Eve had two sons and Cain killed his brother Abel out of jealousy. It must have been a sad moment for Adam and Eve when they saw their son dead. After that violence began to spread everywhere and God regretted that he had made his people and decided to end it all in a great flood. Noah and a few others survived the flood and began the human race again. But violence continued to spread. God saw men murdering, killing, looting, dying, falling down into hell. But God did not despair of the human race and he called Abraham out of his country for a new beginning. Cain killed his brother in a fit of anger and jealousy and so began the terrible history of violence which has so crippled the human race and kept it far from God and true peace and happiness. This painting by Brocklin is called succinctly War. The dogs of war are periodically let loose on the human race and destroy everything in their path. Rome and its Colosseum are taken as symbols of violence. People were brutally killed in large numbers merely for the amusement of the Roman people. This painting by Jean Guérôme is called The Christian Martyr's Last Prayer. When we think of the way so many Christians died for their faith, we should really ask ourselves just how serious are we in our faith? Gladiators fought one another, and when one was seriously wounded, the Vestal Virgins, the guardians of the Roman religion, decided whether he should live or die. How degraded can religion become? Behind all this violence is Satan and his cohort of evil spirits. They do not commit violence, but they incite people to do it. In this graphic painting by the artist Grunewald, we see St. Anthony being tempted by the evil spirits. Spirits do not have a body and therefore they do not appear ugly as in the picture. Their minds, however, are totally ugly, lost in hatred and rebellion against God. God decided to destroy the world he had made. He found one just man, Noah, and told him to construct a large boat and take his family and a pair of all living creatures into the boat because a terrible flood was about to come. We should not take the details of the story of Noah literally. Many countries have their story of a great flood the author wished to use two current stories to teach us spiritual truths, not historical facts. We should try to remove violence from our world, not quibble about the details of Noah's story. That is the point of the flood story. Jan Bruegel painted this picture of Noah gathering the animals. Let us not waste time asking how many animals or how did Noah collect them all. That is not the point. The point is to repeat what are we doing to lessen violence in our world. All living creatures were swept away in the great flood. Noah and those with him survived in the ark.
Cole Thomas has given us this peaceful picture of the ark coming to rest after the great deluge. The human race began again, but it would seem that they had not learnt much from the deluge experience. People became proud in their prosperity and thought they had no need of God. In fact, they thought they were just as good as God and in order to show it, they would build a tower up to the heavens. Perhaps in our modern day and age, we are doing the same thing. People think that they can do anything and everything and have no need of God. A pity, surely, because everything we have comes from the hand of God. This painting by Arnold Boots is entitled The Fall of the Damned. It is a terrible thing, but people can fall into the same state of rejection and hatred of God as Satan and his evil spirits. They can totally reject God and everything he stands for and would never wish to live in his presence. God could have been forgiven if he had totally given up on the human race and left us to our fate. But God never withdraws his love or cancels out his choice. God always goes on hoping against hope that eventually we will straighten ourselves out and return to him. God chose Abraham and called him out of his country for a new beginning. Abraham believed in God and was willing to go wherever God led him. This is what faith is, to trust in God and to do what he wants. God showed Abraham the night sky and promised that his descendants would be as numerous as the stars of the night sky or the sands of the seashore. Abraham and his wife Sarah were getting on in years and as yet they had no child. One day they had a mysterious visit by three divine strangers. Abraham welcomed them and served them a meal. One of them promised that Sarah would soon give birth to a son. Sarah had been listening to this conversation from inside the tent and began to laugh. The divine visitor asked why Sarah had laughed, and of course she denied that she had. At last Abraham and Sarah's son Isaac was born. After some years, God gave Abraham an extraordinary order. Abraham was to sacrifice his only son. God seemed to be contradicting himself. How could Abraham's descendants be as numerous as the stars of the sky or the sands of the seashore if he were now to sacrifice his only son? But Abraham had such faith in God that he was even prepared to obey such an extraordinary order. When he was about to kill his son, an angel stopped him. Sometimes we too may find ourselves in a similar position. Do we obey reason or do we obey God? We must always follow God knowing that he can always bring every situation to a happy conclusion. <laughs>